Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to backtest a covered call strategy over multiple tickers. For this tutorial, I'll be using CBOE options data and I have a video on how to scrape this options data off their site. So I'll be requesting this options data from my SQL database just so that I could request data faster than by using traditional files. So my options data actually begins somewhere around April of 2021. So I'll try to use all available data up to this point. So we start off by requiring some packages and also storing my database password. So since my options data begins somewhere in April, I'll be using the third Friday in April as a beginning point. And I'm going to make a sequence of dates from that date until present. And I'm going to add 30 days so that I get that very next expiration. So let's go ahead and run this line. So now I'm only going to extract option expiration days. And these are for the monthly contracts, not the weeklies. And I'll do that by creating a fake XTS object so that I can use options expiry to extract those dates. So I'll show you what that NA XTS looks like. So it's just a sequence of dates with NA values. Now the next line will just extract that third Friday in each month. So let's go ahead and run that line. And if we go to our console and type in dates, we now see a vector of dates for options expiration. So it'll be the third Friday of each month. And how the strategy will work is that I'll open up my covered call positions on each of these dates and hold until the very next expiration. So as a starting point, I'm gonna open up a position on April 16th, hold it until 521, and then repeat the process. And it'll do that across all these dates up to the very next expiration. So today is November 13th. So the very next expiration is on Friday, November 19th. So now let's take a look at our very first function, which will be used to extract data from my database. Alternatively, you can do this without having a database, but it'll consume a lot of memory and it'll be much slower since you would have to call in all those files and store them in your environment. So if we open up this function, we will begin by establishing a connection to the database and passing in your user ID and your password. And for the statements, I'm gonna select all options where the symbol matches the ticker I pass in along with the opening date and the expiration date. So all we need is just to pass in the ticker as we will be using these dates for our opening and our next expiration date. So after I make the request, I'll disconnect from my database and just return those options. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this function and I'll go ahead and run it. So for the back test, I created this function which has the following parameters. So for the expiry dates, I'm just gonna pass in the vector of dates that we created earlier. We will need this variable as I'll be requiring all my options data from my database. So we can go ahead and delete that. I had alternatively read in the options, but as I mentioned previously, that takes too long to run and it consumes a lot of memory since everything was called into the environment. So we won't need that parameter anymore. We pass in the ticker or the symbol that we want to run the back test on. And then finally, as a last parameter, I have this strikes above ATM. So within this function, you have the option to sell the at the money strike. So the very first strike that's in the money basically, or alternatively, you can specify the number of strikes above that at the money strike. You would insert zero if you want the at the money strike or the number of strikes above that at the money strike. So if you want the very first strike that is out of the money, you would type in one. So let's open up this function. So we're gonna go ahead and pass in our dates, our symbol and the strikes above at the money. And for each of the expiration dates in our dates vector, we will assign the opening date, the next expiration, and then we'll make a request to get data for those options. And we're gonna store that in OP. So in order to calculate which of these options are in the money or out of the money, I just took the difference between that stock close and the strikes, which we will then later compare to what the user inputs as the strikes above ATM. So if the user typed in zero, it'll go into this if statement. So we will start off by eliminating all of the out of the money calls. And then we compare which of the differences between the close and the strike is the smallest and return the one with the smallest difference. So that'll be our at the money strike. Alternatively, if the user inputs something different, then we first have to compare 
how many strikes the user entered because sometimes options chains don't have that much data for different tickers. So we have to make sure that what they input is available. So if it's out of the range, say the user inputs five, but there's only three above the add the money strike, it'll just return that very last strike. So after we get our data, I'm only going to extract certain columns, such as the dates, the expiration, the dates to expiration, the stock close, the strike, and the mid price of the option. Do a bit of free formatting on the column names and return that data. So it'll repeat this process until our dates vector is exhausted. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. So after I read in the data, I'll go ahead and R bind list. And since our last expiration is sometime in the future, it hasn't expired yet. So I'm going to get the quote for the latest price for that symbol, which will be useful to calculate the PL on that current position. I'm going to add the stock price at expiration for each of the expirations in our dates vector, and that will be added as a column. So the next thing we'll calculate is the difference between the price at expiration and the strike, and that's the underlying price. So that'll get stored in a column, and then we'll use that to calculate our net premium. So if this number is positive, we are just going to sell our stock at the strike and we're going to add the option call premium, which we received when we sold that option. Otherwise, that means that the strike ended up being out of the money, so it expired worthless. So the net premium just becomes what we received when we sold the option, plus the difference between the stock to the strike price. All right, so the next two lines are just used to calculate returns. So we're going to calculate two things. The first will be our covered call return, which is just the net premium divided by the stock price when we sold the option and our stock return is just a simple return between the stock price. So where it ended versus where we opened. And then finally, we will just return our options data frame, which will contain all of these items. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this function. I'll go ahead and run it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and test the function. I'm gonna pass in my dates vector. The symbol I wanna test is Ford stock and I want the at the money strike for all expirations. So I'm going to go ahead and run this line. All right, so let's take a look at that data frame. So we opened up our first covered call position on 416 and we held it until 521, which gave us approximately 35 days to expiration. The stock price at the beginning was 1223. We sold that $12 strike and the call premium was 73 cents per option. The price at expiration was 1333. The difference between the stock at expiration and the strike is $1.33. So the net premium is 50 cents. So we sold the call for 73 cents, but you have to keep in mind that the stock price is a little bit higher than the strike price. So since we have to sell our stock at the strike, we lose 23 cents. But since we received 73 cents, we're left with 50 cents as net. So that's what this column is. The very next column is just the return for the strategy. So at this expiration, we made approximately 4%, which if you remember, is just calculated by the net premium divided by the opening stock price. So 50 cents divided by 1223 is approximately 4%. The stock actually returned 8%, which is just the difference between this column price at expiration by the opening stock price. So over the seven months we used this strategy, we were all in the green. So it never lost money within this time period. So of course, with the strategy, you do miss on the upside and it does lose money if the stock actually ends up being lower than what you entered minus the premium received. But at least for four stock within this time period, it has managed to stay in the green. So now let's take a look at what happens if we sell at the very first out of the money strike for each of these months. So if we go back to our script, I'm going to go ahead and run this very next line. And if we take a look at that data frame, all right, so if we focus on this covered call return, we do see that there's some instances where it did lose money, but our upsides are a little bit higher when compared to just selling the at the money strike. So now let's test a couple of tickers to see how they performed across the seven months. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass in a couple of tickers and I'm gonna create a table where we can easily compare the returns. So if we open this up, I'm gonna pass in my tickers I'm going to apply the covered call strategy for each of these symbols. I'm going to sell the at the money strike for each of these. And if we didn't get any errors, I'm going to extract a couple of things for each of the returns. 
So I'll go ahead and extract the symbol, the market points, which is just the difference between the stock to the strike price, the gross premium, which is just the call premium, the market loss, which will just be the net premium minus the call premium, the net premium, which is just the sum of the total net premium, the average stock price across the seven months, the average covered call return, the average stock return, the total strategy return, the buy and hold return, the number of periods, the number of periods below the strike, the number of periods above the strike, and our net gains. I'll go ahead and add the sharp ratio for the strategy and for the buy and hold. And then finally just return this data frame. So let's go ahead and minimize this and go ahead and run this. All right, so when that's done running, I'm going to rbind list all the returns. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at that data frame. All right, so for these two columns, you would want to see a much larger number in this gross premium column than in the market points column. And this just means the total premium received is a little bit greater than just buying and holding since we collected approximately 36 points from selling calls versus just buying and holding, which returned approximately 31 points. So as you can see, it's not the same for all of these tickers. Sometimes we collected a little bit less than what the market returned. The net premium, sometimes we have to sell our stock at the strike at a loss. And this just becomes the net of what we collected. The average stock price for the seven months. So here we have our average covered call return versus just buying and holding. So if we were to add up all the returns for the covered call strategy, they would be in this column versus the buy and hold return for the stock. All right, so let's see the next couple of columns. So the total number of periods were seven for seven months. The number of times we closed below the strike versus the number of times we closed above the strike. This very next column returns the net gains or the number of times we didn't lose any money using the strategy. The sharp ratio for using the strategy versus the sharp ratio for the stock. So on a risk adjusted basis, this is a fairly good strategy, but you kind of have to remember that during the seven months, the stock market overall has been going up. I think you can find a stock that has relatively low volatility where the strategy will work. All right, guys, well, this concludes the video. I'll go ahead and post a link down in the description area where you can get this script. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.